All right, what's up, guys? I'm going to try this one more time. I actually just got off and just took my audio recorder and recorded a whole separate daily detail tip on what auto detailing is because I was getting frustrated. But let's see if we can get this to work. I kind of rebooted uh, everything except for my modem. Uh, and let's see if I can make this work. I'll give it a few seconds, let everyone join again. And at the same time, I'm actually going to upload uh, the episode um, to the auto detailing podcast. So, or for the podcast tomorrow, let me see if I can minimize these two things. All right. There we go. What's up, Jordan? What's up, Travis? What's up, Grant Hotre? Hope everything's going good down under, man. You can do it. It's not me. It's the computer. So uh, basically, what's up, Jordan? If you guys are just joining, you can comment. You know, Let me know where you're at, where you're listening to this episode from. It's not the middle of the night for me, but might as well be getting pretty close. I'll be at 922 where I'm at. So what I really wanted to talk about and kind of I'll just do a recap about uh, what is auto detailing and, and basically what um, I still can't say your name right, Grant. Sorry. Uh, what's up, Cody? What's up, Danny? Joining. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was what is auto detailing? So uh, yeah, I'm not sure what A1 Wi-Fi connection is, but... I have two antennas with tinfoil on them connecting to my wireless router. Actually, I have my router in the living room, which is then bouncing off my Wi-Fi booster in the back bedroom, which is then beaming to me out in my workshop garage. Um, so really interested to see what your, uh, what your take on what is detailing. Uh, I have a daily detail tip coming out live tomorrow. Um, and actually maybe what I'll do is after I get this kind of going, uh, like I said, I'm actually up, I recorded about a 10 minute episode, uh, just now for what I thought it was in my opinion, but I really want to hear, uh, what everyone else has to say. So, um, if you have an opinion on what detailing is or what it is to you, I'd love to hear it and share everyone's everyone's comments. What I will do is go back to the three other Facebook Lives that I tried to do before this and and uh, record some comments. I wear my glasses too because I can't see anymore. The doctor said it's because I look at my phone too much, which is awesome. Um, all right, Grant Hotry, thanks for chiming in and being the first one. It says, detailing is a passion, business, and entrepreneurship. Actually, I don't think I need that anymore because I think I'm uh, – can you still hear me? I think I'm on my headphone mic. Uh, let me know if you can still hear me. Detailing is a passion, business. What's up, Sean? Thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, I think so too. And I think detailing – what I kind of described in the podcast was that detailing can be whatever you want it to be, right? It can be – it can be therapy. It could be. Um, it can be a passion. It could be a business. Um, it could be any of that. Up, Spencer. So I'm. I'm going to have that uh, podcast going live tomorrow. Sorry, I got like three windows open. Trying to. Trying to go back to the previous. Um, there we go. Uh, I'm trying to go back to the previous lives to see what questions or comments were coming through. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, so Travis said detailing is a, as a business is the ability to be an effective marketer, which I think is true. Uh, John said too much thinking into what it is as they say it is what it is. And if you're a detailer and get paid for it, paid for your service so it be if it's a hobby same thing but i think too many people are just trying to make it into more than it needs to be uh, as nike said it just do it and i think you're totally right right it, it's um people have kind of tried to make it more than it really needs to be but that's obviously i'm trying to be an effective marketer right like travis says and 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 uh and take advantage of that cody says detailing is cleaning a vehicle to a certain level that meets or exceeds your customers expectations for that scenario right so we can be educators right the the daily detail tip that came out came out on friday was you know a, a lot of the comments that came through was 
you know, educate your customers on what services you offer and then deliver on after you give them all the options and you give them, um, you give them what you think your car needs, you know? So then I thought, then is detailing, are you an educator? Right? So are you a craftsman? Are you a, uh, like the big debate I saw was like, are you a craftsman or are you a, um, I can't think artist. Right. And there's like this big long debate of like, are you a craftsman or are you an artist? And it's like, I just looked at it and I'm like, well, who cares? Right. Maybe you're both. Right. Because who, who are, you know, who is anyone to say that you're not an artist or not a craftsman? Right. So, uh, I totally agree, John, way too much thought put into it, but it makes for an interesting conversation. Um, so you can comment below. I, it, you know, this, this is a lot more fun if it's just not me talking to myself. Um, so if you guys comment below, I will get to those comments. Um, what's up, Peter? I've been thinking about you, man. Um, let's do it. The Explorer and the F-150. I'm ready, man. Same number. <laughs> Take care of it. So comment below. We got about 20 people on right now. Uh, I'd love to hear what um, you think. The art comes from the craftsmanship. What's up, John Pettit? Hold on. Oh my gosh, you're gonna get <laughs> so more importantly, where do I get my hair cut? I just got a cut today. How's it look? Good? I'm very, very picky about where I get my hair cut. I get it cut by uh, a uh, friend of mine. Hi Katie. Katie Scoopvik joined. Great. So what is auto detailing to you? Like to me, I think the overarching theme is that it should be fun, right? So if you can't have fun detailing, um, I think that's a huge bummer because it's, it's such an opportunity uh, to, to have fun doing something that uh, is really cool. I think we have all these people in the last video. I, uh, I asked where people were from. Maybe we should do that again because that's always fun. Uh, Jesse Liu, I think that was his name on the on the past video. He said, in short, detailing is surface enhancement on every aspect of the car, right? Because it could be interior, exterior. Uh, Travis says, my artwork, your masterpiece. What day did you want to drop it off? Exactly. And if you're running a business, that's what it comes down to, right? It's like, it's like when do you want to drop it off? I'm here. Um, let's see. Hey, by the way, while I got everyone on the thing, I'm going to post a comment. There's a little group that everyone was, uh, everyone was, everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone was starting the group. Not, I'm not an effective, uh, multitasker. So everyone was starting the Facebook group. So I thought I'd join in, uh, again, this conversation is a lot more exciting when it's not just me talking. So, uh, Jamie's from Georgia. Uh, what's up, Philip? Just joined. So I really want to hear your guys' opinion on what auto detailing is. I think we're multiple things. We're craftsmen. We're artists. We're educators. We're informants. We are uh, problem solvers, problem seekers, um, all that. So I think I think detailing. I think we're. It could be uh, a therapy drug, right? Um, what's up, Julio? See you. Uh, so I just recorded, I tried doing a Facebook live and a, Hey, what's up, Scott stink detail, Scottsdale. Thanks for chiming in. Um, or thanks for joining. Um, there we go. Let me go back up to my comments. I'm going to copy this. So what's up, Frank and Cody? We're talking about what is auto detailing. Uh, detailing. Spencer says detailing to me is a passion and a therapy. I just I just so happen to enjoy it. I think that's rad. I think that's that's what it is uh, to so many people, right? It starts out as a passion, as a um, as a therapy. I know for me it was it was kind of uh, like a gateway, right? What's up, Philip? Thanks for joining, man. Um, I think it, for me it was a gateway and and a bridge to what i wanted to do which was get out of get out of uh college and get out of working at the restaurant um and detailing did that to me cody baker cb detail 
in Douglas, Wyoming. Awesome. Uh, Grant Hotry, you're exactly right. He says we're the equivalent of a Swiss Army knife for cars, right? So, um, and that's kind of what I touched on for uh, the the daily detail tip that's going to be coming out tomorrow. Is that you know not a lot of mention a lot of times it gets mentioned that um, you know we're we're artists because of what we can do with paint, but are are we the same when it comes to interiors? Um, and so, as you've been noticing, a lot of talk gets mentioned about, you know, car paint being changed from even make and model, um, sometimes even between the same make and model of a car, depending on what plan it came out of. Um, but has anyone noticed how bad the interiors are getting on cars these days, how thin the materials are? It's horrible. So, uh, hey, Frank in Denmark, how cool is that? Um, Jamie says, yeah, I agree. I started detailing. It's a getaway type thing. Use used to detail my truck for hours and get lost. Now he's starting his own little thing and gets lost in every job. And that's cool. But be careful of that, right? Um, so I'm finishing up uploading. I wonder if it, it'd be kind of cool. I wonder if I could do a screen share here. Um, I know it gave me the option when uh, I started, but it'd be cool if I could do a screen capture. I don't think I could change it once I'm in here. But it'd be cool if you guys could see the other half of my screen. I'm trying to upload the uh, uh, the episode so it can go live tomorrow. I tried to do it live on here and live at the same time, and it didn't really work out. So I wish I could do a screen share for it. Uh, daily detail. So for those that are kind of just watching and lurking, please comment, you know, what is detailing to you? What, what do you get out of it? Um, what does it mean to you? Um, and does it mean different? Here's a good question. Does it, if I don't say so myself, does auto detailing mean different things to different people at different times? Right. I think that's important to, to realize. Um, Bryce way past my bedtime. It's past my bedtime too, bro. I'm going to have to wrap this up soon. I wanted to come on for like 10 minutes uh what did i have for dinner wow I, what is detailing is that boring of a subject on huh, grant um what's up sergio serrano thanks for hopping on man appreciate it uh for dinner i had um my family came over so i had uh, my mom brought some tri-tip and some ribeye steaks um with some asparagus i'm trying a new uh eating plan called keto I'm trying to cut some weight I'm trying to get rid of this double chin my turkey gobble. Uh, what's up, Miles from Smiles Detailing in North Texas? No cars, just boats and RVs. So there you go. There brings up a whole nother thing. To him, detailing has nothing to do with cars, right? Um, only boats and RVs, which I think is a, a, a just such a great market, boats and RVs. I've thought a lot about just strictly doing RVs. Actually have a guy that I'm, I'm been DMing. Actually, he DM'd me on... Uh, on Instagram and he only does Porsches. Um, he only does Porsches, which I thought was cool. So I think, um, I think we're going to start seeing that too, as you know, the landscape gets so competitive in detailing, uh, especially in, in kind of high density areas that as it's like the internet, right? As everything has grown bigger and kind of everything is available, it's also going to shrink down. So when you start shrinking down your niche and doing, uh, Travis McNutt texted me and said, I can't, are you live? I can't get it back. And I text him, I'm black instead of back. Um, I think niching down within the detailing space. Um, I don't know if he's still on here, but, uh, Dave Silicon, you know, kills it with headlights right? And does detailing, other detailing as well. A lot of correction coatings from what it seems. Uh, and I've experienced his headlight coating uh, in person from another detailer that uses it around me. Um, and it's freaking phenomenal. Uh, Dave, if you're still on, I need to come over to your shop and do an episode about that. Uh, David says, detailing to me brings me back to the automotive industry I started with. Uh, still painting. Is that, David, are you painting cars? Um, I assume. Uh, Miles says, niche yourself. I've been doing it for seven years. Uh, 
Travis, always dropping the heat, man. Whatever it is to you, if you want to be successful by your own interpretation, take massive amounts of action to accomplish your goals. Action equals production. Exactly. Um, and Scott, I think you're you're totally right. You know, detailing is all about preserving and enhancing, right? Um, Travis kills it in the Mopar niche, right? Mopar or, or no car. But Travis, don't you drive an infinity? Um, create a niche. Uh, what's up, Matt Holloway? Thanks for coming back. I can figure it out. Scott, I think that's right. You know, and and you can kind of leave it up to each person's interpretation because preserving and enhancing can be super minor or it could be like on the level that you do of, of you know, concourse show, shows, right? So it could be everything from enhancing and then preserving a, a soccer mom minivan or um, – or it can be, you know, restoring history and preserving the history of that car. I think that's really well said. Um, Randall Hyatt says, super clean, Yoda for life. Uh, if that's a uh, Toyota, okay, I thought you were going to go Star Wars there and then you were going to lose me. Definitely a Toyota fan. Uh, David says he did paint cars. Now I paint and help build concert tour stages with a company called Tate Towers. Interesting. That sounds cool. Let's go back over here and continue to upload a podcast for tomorrow. I'm going to go live at 2 a.m. Exactly. It's all what your clients are willing to pay for, right? So, uh, exactly, Scott. And, and I think that's where we can title ourselves educators if we wanted, right? We need to educate the client on the options because they're not familiar necessarily with, with what's going on in the detailing space. Even though I think this whole, there is a whole new type of customer that's going to be coming out. Um, and I'm calling it the prosumers, right? So, thankfully from the internet and all that there's a ton of information out there on detailing and what i'm starting to see is these like super informed customers um that that are just really 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 well informed about the process of detailing the products in the detailing space um and so uh that i think that's something that i'm going to start talking about and kind of paying a little bit more attention to. One thing I just realized, sorry guys, my mic is plugged into the wrong thing. Oh no, that audio must have sucked. Sorry, hopefully that's better. Um, so prosumers I think are, are going to uh, be this whole new niche of customers that come out. But I think the cool thing about that is they're more informed. So they're, they're probably willing to pay a little more. Spencer, if you're asking me, I am from Southern California. Born and raised. Matthew Holloway um, says, is it bad to clay a new car or unnecessary? Um, looks like Bishop said, Matt, you can never go wrong claying a car. Um, I guess you can. It's, uh, it's, it could be necessary. It could be unnecessary to clay a new car. If, if you have a new car, I would go definitely stick with the clay bar, not the clay mitt or clay disc or anything like that. Scott, again, 100%. Educating your clients makes you more valuable to them. If you're more valuable to your clients, you can charge more, right? Uh, Johnny says, hey, Jimbo, I was listening to one of your podcasts today, and you mentioned that you can't drive stick shift and damaged one of your customer's car. <laughs> Question, is there insurance for detailers for such incidents like this? Uh, audio is worse with the mic. Really? Okay. Uh, let me know if that's better. Um, I unplugged the mic. And if it's uh, if it's worse, let me know. See you, Travis. He's out. Um, where was I at? Uh, correction: I can drive stick shift now, for the most part. Um, I did have insurance at the time, um, but honestly, the repair I just didn't want to go through insurance for it, uh, mainly because I didn't want the customer to have to hassle it. Um, so the audio is better without the mic, without whatever, go figure. Um, all right. So 
Uh, I just didn't want to go through insurance with the customer for that one. The repair seven hundred bucks. The sorry, the repair ended up being six or seven hundred bucks, and I didn't want to risk the increase uh, in insurance premium. So um, I just paid for it cash out of pocket. Uh, thanks for the link, Grant. Grant, what did you link? Let's see. A Facebook video to me? Not me. All right, whatever. It's cool. Uh, Randall Hyatt says, what do you think about this? Sealant first, then quick wax or regular wax. I'm a huge fan of anything that has anything that is a spray wax um, simply because I don't think the durability of a quote unquote wax is really there beyond more than a couple weeks. Uh, if your car isn't constantly garaged and protect and covered. Um, so I'm a big fan of using a quick wax um, every time you wash your car, whether you use it as a drying aid or whether you use it um, on once the car is completely dry. I'm a huge fan of a quick wax um, because you'll do it more often, right? So I don't think like the old school Carnuba wax, right? So we have like an old school tin of mirror glaze from Meguiar's, right? So doing, um, doing a, a paste wax um, on, a, say, a daily driver, I think, is a little inefficient. Um, I think if you're doing show cars or uh, prepping a car for a show and really need that really deep gloss that only, like, a car nuba can truly offer. Um, hey, man, I, Spencer, I'm in Seal Beach. Uh, where are you at in Southern California? That's cool, man. Um, so I think uh, if you seal a car with a sealant and then – Every time you wash the car, just hit it with a spray wax. I think that's uh, ideal. Obviously, even if the car's coated, I think you should, could spray wax it. Uh, why not? Someone asked me, this car behind me, someone asked me, like, oh, what do you have on it? And I'm like, dude, I got so much crap on that car. Like, I don't even know where to start. It's coated. It has a sealant. It has hydrosilics I tried on it. It has Adams products. It has... Pearl Nano on it. It has like so much stuff that, um, it, like, I don't even know what's actually working or not working on it. Um, uh, Travis says wax is dead. Debatable. Debatable. Okay, Spencer, Temecula, Marietta, nice. Um, Hydrosilics for code cards. And going back, I'm going to wrap this up soon, but going back to kind of what I talked about, uh, about this new this new niche of customers coming out called, you know, I'm calling them prosumers. I don't know if that's a, a term or not, but it's, it's a really informed customer, right? Which is, I think going to be a really good uh, type of customer to have. It can be a little tricky and difficult to work with and you got to make sure you know your stuff, but I've had customers um, call and ask specifically for hydrosilics. Uh, not many, but one or two that specifically want, hydrosilics on their coated car which i thought is like wow that's very very interesting uh for someone to call and, and want something that specific um so that's cool uh do you still use opti seal i do um not as much as i used to uh but i do still use it simply because i have people asking for it um and it's very very simple to use i think there's i think there's other products that offer a little bit more gloss uh, and a little more uh, longevity, um, or maybe not necessarily longevity, but a little more, a little more gloss. So, um, yeah, kind of switched over to that. Uh, still trying to multitask. Uh, yeah, OptiSeal as a dry nade is amazing, 100%. So that's my thing too. If you have, if you have products that are easy to use. Um, you'll use them more often, right? So, and that's why I tell my customers, you know, just go pick up a, if you're going to be maintaining your car yourself, uh, just go pick up a spray wax. Um, and it's a lot easier than, you know, the wax on, wax off thing. Spencer, are you from Clarity One or do you just use Clarity One? Um, I tried out one of their things a long time ago. Um, What's up, Chad? Sergio, Beadmaker. Beadmaker's great. Um, I liked it. Um, John uses OptiSeal. 
uh, I haven't tried Hyper Seal, so I really do want to really do want to try that. Um, guys, we're talking about what is auto detailing. If you're catching the replay, that's awesome. We've kind of transitioned into that. Sorry, it's taken a few. Uh, it's taken a few goes to make this happen. Um, so Randall asks, what are your thoughts uh, of Jet Seal by Chemical Guys? I've been using that on customers' car and get awesome results. I really like the uh, workability of that product. So I think it's really funny how much crap Chemical Guys gets. I, man, this could be another – this is why sometimes I just like getting going. Hey, what's up, KB Detailing? Where are you from? Let's hear it. Uh, best products I've ever used. Cool. So Clarity One. Um, I'll be honest. I tried their uh, – one time I was in a real pinch, and I really wanted to try Essence by CarPro, and I couldn't get it because – Shipping from Auto Geek was going to be ridiculous because I wanted it like right away. And so I tried the Clarity One. Um, it was like their primer polish. Um, and granted, this was probably two years ago and it I didn't love it. So I was kind of reluctant to try anything else from them. Uh, but I should. I should give them a try. They're, they're local. And that's cool. Um, Wales UK. What's up, Stephen from Wales? Um, Cool. Spencer's been using Clarity One dot net, Clarity One products for ten years. Uh, Chemical Guys has a few guys, a few products that are staples for Aaron. Uh, Scott says ninety percent of my client cars I wax, but that's why I'm tailored to. I'm very picky on what customers' cars I coat. Not all clients qualify for coating. Hundred percent, which is why I don't think wax is dead. I think I think it's always going to have its place, right? Um, even if that only becomes where it's just nostalgia, right? But I think, yeah, uh, there there is something interesting. There's an interesting thought to coatings are so new. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's any any uh, downside to them in the future. But I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, sorry, going back to Jet Seal uh, by Chemical Guys. It's it's going to be a way different application than an Opti Seal. Right, so it's not. Um, I I don't believe. Yeah, it's too thick to spray. So the the ease of application compared to something like an Opti Seal, um, obviously isn't going to be there. But I think it is. Uh, I think it's a decent product. I really do. I think it's relatively easy to use. Another one, their fifty fifty paste wax is very very easy to use. Um, longevity again. Longevity is such a subjective thing, right? Because is the car exposed to the elements? Is it not? Do you live close to the beach? Like I live really close to the beach. So that salt air in the morning, the dew that sits on the cars at night and then the sun coming out in the morning is going to affect the car paint differently. Um, hey, see Scott. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, appreciate it. Love everything you said, man. That was great. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah, I think it's, I think it's funny how bad of a rap uh, chemical guys gets. Um, and, and it's fair, right? They have a million different products with like 15 different labels that are probably the same thing. So for the, the, the professionals that can kind of see through the marketing, um, uh, the marketing ploys of that, um, I think that's what has pissed a lot of detailers off. But I think, uh, I think if you're looking from a consumer standpoint, they really want, specific items for specific things right so they really do want a fender well dressing and then they want a tire shine dressing right and then they want a sprayable they want a gel they want all these different things. they want a you know a, a trim dressing separate from a you know a tire dressing but don't realize that like a vinyl rubber plastic dressing will do all of those so anyway but i think it's funny that a lot of people will bash uh, chemical guys a lot of other companies will bash chemical guys and then when you look on instagram there's a lot of companies trying to be chemical guys so i think that's something that's that's pretty interesting um yeah spencer chemical guys has way too much stuff i get it i for sure get it i honestly don't have too much stuff from chemical guys i don't really ever use it unless i'm just trying it out they're green waterless I don't have it right here, but they're green waterless. Uh, their green waterless wash is, I really like that for a quick detail spray. 
Uh, David said he started out using chemical guys, slowly expanding. And I think that's cool, man. Like just, and if it works for you, use it, you know? Um, all right, where are we at over here? Let me do this one. Still trying to upload that episode, going on 30 minutes of trying to, uh, yeah, Meguiar's Detailer Products. Um, those are great too. Usually highly dilutable, which is great. I love hyper dressing. Uh, eco wash eco smart eco wash something like that i i honestly really 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 like that product as a uh, as a quick detailer so eco wash cool yeah i think that's what it's called too i don't remember i got it and then i it's pretty highly dilutable if you get the concentrate so um yeah all right guys i think i'm going to wrap this thing up i'll wait a couple more i'll wait another minute or so if there's any other questions uh, John mainly uses Optimum and American Detailer Garage, dude. Billy, I owe that guy a phone call. He, I love that dude. Um, great things. Valor, I got a little sample of Valor. Uh, sweet product. It's really cool. A lot more gloss than uh, OptiSeal, in my opinion. Just one man's opinion. Um, uh, yeah, Grant nailed it, the overarching theme, right? Find something you use and, and use it often, 100%. Love that. Love that, love that, love that. So if that's it, guys, you can continue to comment, and I will uh, I'll answer these later. Uh, Randy said, do I own – call me. I sent you an email. Great story. Joe Kennedy, are you talking to me? Uh, cause you sent me an email. Did we talk? If not, send me another email. Randy, do I own a detailing business? I do. Jimbo's detailing.com. I've uh, been doing it since May of 2008. Um, Joe, did I respond to your email? If I didn't, I apologize. Uh, just sent it. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Did you send it to Jimbo at autodetailingpodcast.com? Joe, I got it. Uh, 45 years detailing experience. As soon as we get off this, I will check that email. And if I don't get back to you tonight, I will get back to you tomorrow. Okay. And we'll make sure we do that. Uh, Jonathan asked, does a client, uh, this client ever asked you for a coating but doesn't want you to polish before for time's sake? Um, yes. So I would I would be uh, not cool, Joe? Not cool to read an email while I'm on Facebook Live or not cool that I'm not going to get back to you soon? Look forward to call. Cool. We'll, we'll talk, Joe. I promise. Um, wow. Detailed 100,000 vehicles and counting. Um, Joe, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah. So people have asked me to coat a car without polishing it. And really that it, I wouldn't do it. Um, if it was really, really bad, obviously. Um, and well, I would do it if it was really, really bad. If the understanding was that they understood that it was really, really bad. And of course I would try to talk to them at least into a one step to clean that up. Um, but Hey man, I'm here to educate the customer and then, the, then to deliver on what the customer wants. So if that's what they want, um, uh, uh, that's what I'm here to give them. You know, obviously I would try to talk them out of it, but sometimes you can't, they want what they want, man. So, all right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, have a good night, Chad. Appreciate it, man. Um, if there's any other questions, I'll hang out one more minute, and then I'll, I'll jump in uh, later. I'm going to upload this up to YouTube as well. Um, I appreciate everyone jumping on and hanging out. Super cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, you got it, Jonathan. I want to do this more, man. I really do. I just i am starting to get sleepy right now. So, all right, guys, a couple more seconds. Uh, that's a whole, whole episode there, coding without correcting. It's a controversy. It definitely is. 
uh, and we could talk about it. Maybe I'll do another Facebook Live and start turning these into daily detail tips. I think that'd be fun. I really, really like the interaction. So favorite polish. Um, so when you say polish, are you talking a true polish? Or are you talking a compound or whatever? I'll answer both. How about that? So uh, if we're talking more on the heavier cut side, um, I'm going to be either grabbing M100 or Scholl's uh, S30. Shoot, what is it called? That used to be my favorite. Um, well, the Scholl's. So it's either M100 or Scholl's. Um, hey, Alejandro, 11 p.m. here, Costa Rica. Uh, it's 10 o'clock here, bro. Been doing this almost an hour now. Um, you got it, John. I appreciate you, man. Uh, so I'll either go M100 or Shoals S30. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, on the Shoals. I think I'm wrong. S40, S20, S20? I don't know. M100, S20. Um, or I will do H HD Speed, uh, which is also another go-to. Um, Travis did send me some Americana Finesse. Uh, very good. True Polish. Uh, when I say true polish, I'm meaning not really any correction, but adding a lot of depth and clarity to the paint. So I'd go for those. Uh, all right, guys, I'm going to get this episode, not this one, but I'm going to get this episode for what is auto detailing up um, on my uh podcast thing for tomorrow it'll be up at two in the morning pacific time i uh, hope you guys enjoy it thanks for joining if you're just logging on there's about 40 minutes of content what's up jeremy um that you guys can check and hopefully we do this more often all right guys take care see ya